Welcome back everyone. We are now going to start the second step in making challah. So once your dough has risen, we now have the opportunity to perform the mitzvah of taking challah. Contrary to popular belief, challah is not the bread itself. It's not the taste of your dough because some people make savory challah and some people make sweet challah. It's not whether the dough is braided or not because some people braid with three braids, some with six, and some make round challahs. Some don't braid at all. What makes challah challah? Well, actually, challah is a mitzvah that the Jewish people used to perform when the temple was functioning, when all the Jewish people used to serve God together in one space. A piece of dough was taken from the larger batch of dough and brought to the priests, the communal servants, who lived off of the gifts of the people. They owned no land, they owned no cattle, they couldn't farm, they didn't have grains to make bread, and so they would live off of all of the tithes of the Jewish people. Even though we no longer have a temple today, we still perform this mitzvah because it teaches us an incredibly valuable lesson. Every physical action or activity that we perform or do on a daily basis, no matter how physical, no matter how self-fulfilling, is an opportunity for us to connect to its natural, spiritual essence. All physical activities we do can be elevated to soul activities. What does challah teach us? It teaches us consciousness around food and what we are putting in our bodies. It teaches us about gratitude, to acknowledge and recognize our blessings, and to recognize our undeserved good fortune by giving to those who have less than we do, or thinking of those who have less than we do. One of the spiritual practices that we do after we take challah, so we're mafresh the challah, we separate the challah, that little piece of dough, we wrap it in foil and we burn it, right? Because we can't eat it, it's considered holy and set aside, kadosh, and not for us to use, is many people take the opportunity to pray for themselves, but also for others, people who are struggling, people who have challenges, illness, um, need livelihood, are in pain, are hurting. And that is one way that the experience of making something as physical and um, self-centered as eating bread or making bread, a spiritual pursuit because we're thinking of others and praying for others in the process. In order to be able to take challah and perform this mitzvah, you have to use at least five pounds of flour, which is why we made such a big batch of dough. But that's great, because then you can take some of those extra loaves and give it to somebody in need, or give it to somebody who would really feel good getting a gift of challah from you, or you can take the baked loaves that you've made and put them in the freezer for another Shabbat in the future. So we're now going to perform this mitzvah together. You can grab onto a piece of the dough that kind of fits into the palm of your hand, about the size of the volume of half an egg, and we're going to make the blessing together. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kiddishanu B'Bitzvotah B'Tzivanu L'Hafrish Chala Min Ha'isa. And now you have your Chala. This has been a JIY project of joy. Click here for our final segment where Sarah teaches us how to braid challah.